The songwriter says, I stand amazed in his presence. I stand amazed in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How awesome is our God. How mighty is our God. Lord, we thank you, O God. Father, I pray for fresh revelation. For your people to see your glory, O God. For your people to know who you are in their lives, Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that their worship, O oh God, will excel, O oh God. Lord, they will come out of the position they are in and change position, Lord. That different perspective to see who you are, Lord, in their lives, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you will take them from glory to glory, O oh God. Change their level, O oh God. Help them to put on that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, Lord. Oh, we give you praise and we give you thanks, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We give you all the praise, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Songwriter says, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can lead me around mountains. He can move mountains. He lift the Bible says, he set it up kings and take it down kings for my, on my behalf. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He makes wa waters in the desert. If you are going through waters and free, he said it will not overflow you. If you are passing through fire, he said you will not get burned. This is the kind of God that we are serving. This is the kind of God that takes us through. We don't know what the enemy has programmed for us. The programming he has programmed. But we don't know what the enemy has programmed. And that worship that you do on your, in your personal time, in your personal level of worship, changes situations. It breaks chains. It sets you free. Don't get weary in praising God. Don't get weary in praising God. Hallelujah. I'm not the preacher today, but I'm going to introduce the speaker to you tonight. A mighty, 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 mighty woman of God. A woman who is not afraid to say what God has to say. A woman who doesn't look at your faces to say what God has to say. A woman who is obedient to the word of God, to the voice of God. A woman who puts God first. She's just like you and I. Have a family, have duties, have responsibilities, children to see about. But she puts God first. And I want to thank God for her life. I pray that God opens doors, blesses her. Move out the, the, the hand of the enemy over her life. Touch her in a, such a deep level that she takes her to that place where she wouldn't dream was possible in him. I pray for fresh revelation. I pray for divine protection and a hedge of protection about her and her household. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that the word that comes forth this evening will go forth with power. It will accomplish, it will break up the things that the enemy has planned. And Father, I thank you for her life and I give you all the praise on behalf of Deacon Eskesia. Father, we thank you for her life, O oh God. All that she has done for your kingdom, Lord. All that she is doing, O oh God. Father, God, make ways where there seem to be no way, Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you'll open doors, Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you will show up and show off in her life, even in her workplace, O oh God. Lord, as she steps in, O oh God, they have no option but to flee. Father, I thank you, O oh God, that you have placed that hedge of protection about her, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have been doing, O oh God. For the testimony of being a godly wife in a home that with an ungodly husband. With a non-believer, she is a testimony that God is good. I just want to thank the Lord for her life, and I'm introducing you again. Not introducing you, but calling the woman of God, Deacon Eskazia, to bring the word this evening. I pray that you will listen to what God has to say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on. Remain in that atmosphere. 
Father, we bless your name. You are faithful. We give you praise. Open your mouth and give God some praise. He deserves our praise. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name this evening. We give all honor, all glory to your name, O oh God. We thank you for you have shielded us from things we did not see. We thank you, O oh God, that you have preserved our lives. We thank you that you have fought battles for us that we did not even know about. We thank you that you continue to do great things in our life. We thank you that no matter what men say, no matter what the enemy tries, it shall not come to pass. For your word says, who is he that said? And it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not. Amen. Father, we bless your name. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. No stone shall cry out for me. I shall come and sing praises to your name. I shall shout of your goodness, O God. I shall shout of your mercy. I shall shout of your goodness upon my life. For I can walk, I can talk, I can dance, I can sing praises to your name all because of your goodness father tonight i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise i exalt your name tonight oh god for you are worthy of all praise you are worthy of all honor you are worthy of all glory father we bless your name tonight we exalt you 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 don't get away in giving God praise. Father, we exalt you. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, oh God. We say thank you, oh God. 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 We say 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 thank you, oh God. Words can't express how grateful we are. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We bless your name. Awesome God, we exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you, oh God. Oh, we bless your name. Mighty God, we give you praise. 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 You have kept us, oh God. You have kept us, oh God. You have kept us, oh God. When men think we would fall, you lift us up, oh God. When they think we would make it, we are here to say thank you, God. We bless your name. We thank you. You have kept us, not only us, but our families. You have kept every member of this ministry. And we thank you tonight, oh God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we bless your name tonight. We thank you, O oh God. The only true and faithful God, we sing praises to your name tonight. We adore you, O oh God. No one can love me like you love me, O oh God. No one can do for me what you can do for me, O oh God. No one, no one, O oh God. And I say thank you, Daddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank God for the privilege to be here today. Amen. I thank God for seeing me fit to use me. Amen. I thank God for our apostle and pastor Vashti. I thank God for their lives, oh God, for this opportunity to be here. I thank God for the life of every leader, every worker, every member. Amen. For those who are watching us online or will watch at a later date, we say thank God for their lives. God has been good. Amen. God has been good. So like you're not sure. God has been good. God has been good. Turn to the person next to you and say, ain't he a good God? Roshan, ain't he a good God? Ivet, ain't he a good God? Toya, ain't he a good God? He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. He's a good, good, good God. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. He is a good God. Tonight, I want to speak briefly on the goodness of God. 
Now, I had a different message prepared. The message was, who does, who does men say I, I am? And yesterday morning while coming in the car, actually I was, before going to work, I was hanging out some clothes. And the neighbor was playing, for all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And I start singing, with every breath that I am able. I will sing. Not nobody singing for me. I will sing of the goodness of God. And I take over in the backyard and they playing. I didn't care who was playing, but I had to praise my God. And that song, it stayed with me. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of your faithfulness, of your goodness. I am not just standing here by chance. It's because of his goodness. You are not here by chance. It's because of his goodness. And after I dropped off the children to school and was on my way to work, I was in the car and boom, it come. The goodness of God. I say, but no, that went and it passed off. And I think I just gone on my way to work. That's my quiet time. The goodness of God. So I stop. I say, but I have a message. I went to work, and on my little dog time, I started doing my preparing the original message and lunchtime, the one, the goodness of God. And I just stopped everything that I was doing yesterday with that other message and prepared this. And I thank God for being obedient and for listening to when he speaks to us. Because I may not understand why he wants me to speak on his goodness. I don't need to understand everything he says to do. All I need to do is obey. Amen? And it's the same thing in our life. We may not understand everything that he says to do, but we must obey. And you know what happens? The sweet thing about life, a little while down the road, you had to stop and say, God, oh, that is why you tell me to do this. That ever happened to you? That is why. So tonight... We'll be talking about the goodness of God. Psalm 145, verses 8 to 9. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. God sets the standard for goodness. His goodness toward us is more than we can comprehend. In fact, because of God's goodness, we are alive today. No one just gets saved or healed just so. It's because of God's goodness. When deliverance comes... It's because of God's goodness. The Lord is good to all. Sunday, we, we continued about what the tongue. Before that, we heard about love. You all remember, we hear about being focused, walking in agreement. 2024 is going to be a great year. Amen. Everywhere you read in God's word, you will find time and time again, a God that goes the extra mile. Have you noticed that? The text says the Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy. He is good to all. To all. Matthew 5 verses 45. He's not good to some. That's not what the scriptures say. To all. He's good to all. Matthew 5.45 says that ye may be the children of your, heaven, of your father, which is in heaven. But this part I want you to read. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. God loves everyone in the world, both the good people and those who are evil. No matter who they are or what they are guilty of, he loves 
and he expects the same from us who call ourselves his children. Amen? We are to love. Love our enemies. Because the Bible said he's good to all. His goodness is not based on who he like or prefer. He's good to all. Theologians refers to God's goodness to everyone, no matter who they are, as a common grace. They refer to it as a common grace. Nahum 1 7, it says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. So it says what? The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Amen? In Matthew 20, verses 1 to 15. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? So when he, they say unto him, Because no man had hired us, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. So he lined them up, right? And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. It is not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own. Is thine eye evil because I am good? <laughs> you understood what we just read? So the wealthy man dropped by the marketplace, which was the ancient equivalent to the un unemployment office. Right? There he had a bunch of guys to work in his vineyard for an agreed upon rate. Of pay. When we read earlier, we saw it was agreed it's a penny, right? After a few hours, he went back again, and then again later, the, that day, each time employing more and more men. In fact, as Jesus told it, the owner of the vineyard hired extra workers right up until quitting time. The last men were hired just one hour before sunset. As the last light of day faded, the workers gathered to receive their pay. They were lined up in order from what? The last to the first, right? 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 Yeah. Every man, no matter how long they had worked that day, received exactly the same pay. One day's wages, which was a penny, right? Think about Trini. Hey, madness. Eh? Madness here. What kind of thing is this? So you go tell me, hold I out in the hot sun, working hard. And this man only come and he spend less than an hour and he want to get the same amount of money like me. You have to be mad. That is madness. Look chaos here. Think about it. Chaos here. Look madness now. So they started murmuring among themselves. You ever see the group of gossipers? 
They are just huddling and, and, and they huddle together and they start shooting. I know all you know it. I know all you know about it. And? Yeah, so they start to shh. And one feel a little brave. He feel a little big about himself. And he had to be mad. Yeah, he felt justified. He had to be mad. So that what he come and do? No. That's not right. What kind of madness is this? But you rob we boy. How you go, how you do that? You rob we. Them just come. How you go get them that and come and give me the same thing? What kind of thing is this? And that's how the witch and you would say it. What kind of thing is this? You had to rob we. This is not right. This is not right. What kind of deal is this we made? <laughs> and you know, as Trini, we always weigh in how much we do compared to the other man, right? <laughs> so we walk, eh? we always compare how much we did compared to the other man. So we work for 10 hours. He come and work for two. And he come and get the same pay like me. But didn't we read that they agreed to one day's wages yeah, that penny? That's it, that's it, that's it. We carry the burden under the hot sun, but you treated them as equal in labor? That we ain't taking that. Eh -eh. The owner of the vineyard replied and said, What well, didn't we agree? An agreement was made on what I would pay. We agreed. I've kept my word to you, me and Robbie. Huh? I've kept my word. What we agree to is what you receive. Now, don't begrudge my desire to be generous. For reasons that are mine, I wanted to do something unexpected. Something that would make these men run home to their wives and say, look, look, look what happened. Look what happened with excitement. <laughs> hey. You need, we need to be careful what we are agreeing to sometimes. Eh? <laughs> but they won't rob at all. Now I want to read for you a story. And I want you to compare these two stories. Remember this we just read, right? So I came across a story that took place in a classroom in Missouri back in 2002. Right? It was a day for final exam. And this woman called Denise walked into the classroom minutes before the professor arrived. Every, everybody in the room was doing last minute cramming. Then the professor enters and takes a few minutes to review. Most of it was familiar, but there were some things that no one remembered ever hearing. So the, the professor responded, this is your textbook. So he showed them, this is your textbook. And you are responsible for the content on this exam, meaning you're supposed to know to go through the book, right? The time came for the test. He gave the word. Every student took up their pen and turned over their test. Now, Dini's in her own words said, I couldn't believe it. To my astonishment, every answer on the test was filled in. My name was even written on the exam in red ink. A wordless stir traveled like a wave across the class as each student looked at their completed exam. On the bottom of the last page of every test was this note from the professor. All the answers on your test are correct. You will receive an A on the final exam. The reason you passed the test is because the creator of the test took it for you. All the work you did in preparation for this test did not help you get the A. Now consider this to the generous gift that was given to the laborers who the others thought didn't deserve it. Tell me what you see in comparison there. Eh? What you see in comparison there between this story and that? Isn't it just the goodness of God? Undeserved favor? Isn't that what we, we, we are seeing? Undeserved favor? <laughs> Those aren't just the experiences in other people's lives. There isn't a single person here this evening who hasn't experienced outrageous, lavish, unexpected, undeserved kindness. I know I have. 
I have. What is more, we experience these every single day. Every day you wake up is an example of God's goodness. No matter if you roll off the bed in pain, it's an example of God's goodness. Amen? It is an example of his goodness upon your life. They are poured out over us constantly. This is because of one unchanging truth that permeates every crease of reality. What it is? God is good. Turn to the person next to you say, God is good. God is good. Exodus 34, 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. He's not lacking in goodness. The Bible said he's abundant in goodness and truth. We find the goodness of God as a recurring theme in the scriptures. First Chronicles, you don't need to go, but you all can write down the scripture. First Chronicles 16.34 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Psalms 34.8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good good and his love is eternal and his faithfulness endures to all generations that is psalm 100 4, verses 4 to 5 god is good that's a common theme god is good amen god is good there's never a time that god is not good amen sometimes we don't see the goodness of god especially when something bad happens to us when we experience a heartache, a tragedy, a disappointment, it seems like God isn't good. Otherwise, why would God allow this to happen to me, boy? Yeah? If God is good, then why do tragedies happen? Why? Killing of the youth, accidents. Loved ones getting sick and die. Why? If God is good, then why did my father or my mother or my brother or my sister, whoever it is to you, why did they die? If God is good, then why all this suffering, not only in this world, but in my life, too, can I go into problems? You know, that's how people talk, right? Why? You could name them. Why? But I want you to know this. Part of our problem is that we spend too much time, too much of our time complaining about the 10 bad things and not enough time rejoicing over the thousand good things. Yes, tragedies happen. But we could be living in Israel where it happens every day. It are places there are bombings every day. Yes, you may have lost a dad, a mom, or some loved one to cancer or to some sickness. But you would have enjoyed 39, 42, 50 years with the person. Yes, I have heartaches and things happen in my life and disappointments. But my good God was there to see me through every single one of them. No matter how we look at it, God is good. No matter if you choose to say he's not good and not stopping bad things from happening. <laughs> it's just giving you stress and more stress. That don't stop bad things from happening. But our God is the God who will be with you through every situation. Everything you go through in life, he's with you. That's the God we serve. Amen? Amen. Psalm 119 verse 68. It says of God, thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. Thou art good. The Amplified Version says it like this. You are good and do good. We sing this song. You are good. You are good. 
Jesus, but you really believe he good? You are good, or you only sing it when things are going sweet and nice. Eh? And you're running down, skipping kumbaya. But when situations happen, that song fall out. That when you have to sing, you are good. You are good, because I know you're going to bring me through it. Jesus, I don't care what happened, what come my way. You are good. You are good. <laughs> you are good. My Jesus, he is. He's the only one who is good. You are good. The first half of that verse focuses on the fact that God is by nature good. That, is, that means he's morally excellent. He have nice words now. Extraordinarily beautiful. Deeply glad and extravagantly bountiful. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. A world without God is not a world I want to be in. A nation without God is a nation that I don't want to be in. You see, when we have God as the foundation, it doesn't matter. And I love these songs. You must stop singing songs when you come in church. It doesn't matter what comes my way. You are still God. And you're just singing this song and just dancing here. But you ain't even know where you're singing. Dependable. Depend. And then you're running out the door crying. Yeah. It's not just about singing songs. You professing something before God. You making bold statements. It doesn't matter what comes my way. Whether I see it as good or not, the problem with we is that we just want to measure good based on our standards, not based on God's standard. So you're singing it and dancing, but as something come here like this. But he's good all the time. Amen? I am here tonight to encourage you God is good all the time. All the time. Think about what we just read there. You are good and do good. The scripture doesn't just say that God does good things. It says that God is good. God is the original definition of good. I love that. They need to have a dictionary. When they say good, you see God. Yeah, they need to put that in the dictionary. Good, God. That's the definition for good. Because God is the original definition of good. And it's good. Yes, the original. <clears throat> he is good in and of himself. For us, goodness is an added quality. But it comes naturally for him. Just as how God is love, God is good. It comes natural for him. God is not just the greatest of beings. He's the best. The goodness of God is not only an attribute of God, but a foundational truth every believer should embrace. We cannot separate what is good from God. You cannot have goodness without God, just as you cannot have God without goodness. Amen? It is absolutely impossible. But how do you see the true character of a person? They're going to say, you could say what you want. Your actions could tell me different, right? And we know that, right? You know, Trini, you have a little thing for everything in life, a little saying for everything. Actions speak louder than words. So the second strand of definition for God's goodness concentrate on what he does. It says, you are good, daddy, you are good, and you do good. So that's not action. Eh? That is action. Because if actions speak louder than words, act that is action, right? You are not just good, but you do good. You do good. And the Bible is replete, meaning it's filled or well supplied with descriptions that point to his kindness, his mercy, his steadfast love, his generosity. Amen? Think about this. Whenever a plane goes down, right? There's inevitably news that come that a group of people didn't go because either they missed their alarm 
or they were stuck in traffic, terrible traffic, and they couldn't make it, or they just had last minute changes to their, their um, schedule, right? You, you know that, right? So you would tell me God ain't good? Eh? Because you wasn't meant to be on that plane. No amount of traffic, if you want to get somewhere, could stop you. Tell people will come out and run if that to run, if they want to go. So you go tell me God ain't good? You miss your alarm in the morning to get up to go to work. And when you do get up, you're late. You're hustling when you go, the car don't want to start. Next thing you get news, major pileup accident. In God good? That's just two examples of ways he has protected us. Things we don't even know about, battles we didn't even know was raging. And he fought it on our behalf. Ain't God good? That's why when Pastor Vash, she start off this evening, when she sat off the prayer, I said, God, you're good. <laughs> because how come she come up here and start into the things? I, say, I tell Rosh, I say, but she, I'll again, she go preach my message. <laughs> I turn and tell Roshan because that's to tell you how the Holy Spirit works. Amen. That is to show you how the Holy Spirit works. Because she came up here, we had no discussion about what my message was about. And she came and she started to talk about how God good, how he have protected us from so much. And I am like, man, God, sometimes he leave you so shocked. Hey. <laughs> oh, you in awe. I tell Rosh and I say, she go preach my message a little. Because it was so on point to the message that was to come, to come for today. And that was just a part of why I understood my message needed to change. God is saying something to us in 2024. And it's only if your ears clog, you wouldn't hear. That's the only how you would hear. God is speaking so, no, it is. <laughs> yeah, because he's, no, the messages, messages that are coming forth. I, I watch these messages. I say, Lord, you, have, you are dealing with love, loving each other. You are dealing with walking in agreement. You are dealing, because we are, this year has been declared our year of dominion. We deal with knowing who you are. You deal with staying focused. And I'm listening to all these messages and the little bits and pieces. Of it's, inter it's, it's intertwined. Uh, so aren't you all paying attention? God shouting. So it's only if your ears clogging truth you wouldn't hear. And that's why I say I'm excited to see what God is going to do in this 2024. And this is just the, the, the top of it. We know in January, I am excited. God is going to do so much great things in our life. Don't study what is going on around the world. What is going on? You focus on God. No matter what, listen, distractions will come. But the only way you'll get distracted is if you take your eyes off of him. Stay focused. God is doing great things, amen? In the life of his people, he's doing great things. God is good. Say it with me. God is Say it again. God is, good. God is good. God is good. Lift your right hand. May God disappoint every expectation of the enemy over your life in Jesus' name. Amen. May every trap the enemy set back fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. May they see you dancing and rejoicing when they expect you to fall in Jesus' name. Amen. May they gang up to bad talk you, turn to their good talking you in Jesus' name. May this year of dominion cause the wicked to be stunned when they thought you would have failed in Jesus' name. Stand up, let's give God some praise. Father, we bless your name. You will disappoint the works of the enemy or for my good. I thank you, God, for when they think I'm going to fall, that's when they'll see me rejoicing. When they think that's the end, it's just a bed. Father, I thank you for you're going to do it for me, oh God. When they gang up against me, oh God, you will fight my battles. You will fight my battles. I thank you, God, for you have fought so much that I'm not even now aware of. You have done it for me before. You will do it for me again. There's nothing that you will withhold from me. No good thing will you withhold from me. We bless your name tonight. We give you praise. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Father, may the wickedness of the wicked come to naught in Jesus' name. May the wickedness of the wicked come to naught in Jesus' name. Come on, say that prayer, Father. May the wickedness come to naught. May it come to naught in the name of Jesus. May the wickedness of the wicked come to naught against my life, against my children's life, against this ministry. Whatever they are plotting, it shall not come to fruition. It shall come to naught in the name of Jesus. May the enemy be, enemy be confused this year concerning me, concerning my family, concerning this ministry, concerning Dominion City, concerning you, the members, the workers, the leaders, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we bless your name. You may have your seats. There's an excitement, a joy to be in the presence of the Lord. God sets the standard for goodness. Mark 10. You'll go to Matthew 19, 16 to 17, right? But Mark 10, 17 to 18, it have the same account, right? It gives the account of the rich ruler. Yeah, you could do the amplified. Give me the Mat Matthew 19, 16 to 17. The same account is in Mark 10, 17 to 18. You can write it down, but we'll read Matthew 19, 16 to 17, right? And someone came to him and said, Teacher, what essentially good thing shall I do to obtain eternal life? That is eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. So he asked him, what, what, what good thing must I do. Yeah, what essentially good thing shall I do to obtain eternal life? Go ahead. Jesus answered, why are you asking me about what is essentially good? There is only one who is essentially good. But if you wish to enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. No, we can't go on reading. I, I, I encourage you to read further down, right? But we'll stop here. He says what? There's only one who is essentially good. The rich ruler had everything money could buy. Think about it. All the big name van in our time, right? All the big name van, the big Jeep, the expensive clothes, the nice house, big house from this corner to that corner that he probably had to take a car to move from one side to the next. Eh? All the nice things in life. He had it, right? He was living a good life. A high life. <laughs> Yet still he didn't know what good was. He thought it consisted of good things. Can you ask what essentially good thing must I do? Eh? He thought that he thought it consisted of good things, good circumstances, good feelings. That's plenty of our, our problem in this life, eh? We want to feel good, look good, taste nice things, taste good things. Live the life. <laughs> Truth, live the life. Eh? But is that truly good? Huh? Eh? Is that truly good? He even thought that being good would get him to heaven if we read down to verse 20. He thought that being good would get him to heaven. I want you to know this. Anything that is good comes from God. If it's not from God, it isn't good. If something isn't good, it didn't come from God. Amen? It doesn't matter how good it looks, how good it tastes, how good it smells. It doesn't matter if it didn't come from God. It ain't good. And if it isn't good, it didn't come from? Psalm 16, verse 2. I 
I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good besides you. I have no good. Whatever I deem good with my own two big eyes, it ain't good if it didn't come from you. I have no good besides you. In you there is good. Goodness is not determined by experience, but by its source. Amen? It's not determined by experience, but by its source. I may have had a bad experience with something or someone, but that doesn't determine whether it is good or bad. That doesn't determine whether it is good or bad. I may not like a particular vegetable. Let's say be truth. Right? I love chocolate. I love it. I love it. And this is re I love it. <laughs> but is chocolate good for me? Or that chocolate that I love so much? Huh? Is beetroot good for me? Yes, it is. So I may not like it because I don't, I don't like the taste of my scratch my mouth, but it's good, right? But the thing that I love that my eyes are zooming on anyway, I see it. It may not be that good for me. Amen? It may not be that good for me. So that's why I said I may have had a bad experience with something. But that doesn't determine whether it's good or bad. So my experience would be truth. In my head, I say it's bad, it's not good because I... But is it really that be truth is not good? No. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? Above. Above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. Why we look to get good from things around us? No, I'm not saying that everything is bad. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is don't make it your focus to these pleasures outside there. And I get pleasure and I feel good. But after I feel good, what happens? The man who smoked marijuana, he may feel good. But what happens after? After all these years of doing it, what happens to him? The man who is addicted to coke, the man or woman, it may make you feel good. I feel high like I was flying. But what happens after? Wow. Huh? The man who even smokes cigarettes, they love the sweet taste of the pull. If they don't get it for a day, they feel sick. But what happens after? Ask a nurse or a doctor. You can, from the time they do a scan, they can tell if you are a smoker or not. Because it, what it does stay inside. So don't get too caught up on the feel good, but get caught up on the one who is good. Amen? In the biblical account of the fall of Adam and Eve, it is significant that Satan's attack was on the dimension of the character of God. It is true Satan virtually called God a liar. And? Genesis 3, 1 to 5. And? But the first attack of Satan was waged against the attribute of his goodness. It was a subtle attack but one that should be obvious to the Christian. Let us read. We'll see it here. Now the serpent was more crafty, subtle, skilled in deceit. That's why when somebody say like a snake, my gosh, re re reading these things, you know, in Trinity, they say, oh gosh, that person, that person like a snake, but you know what I mean? You're subtle, but you're skillful, you're deceitful. You're good at... <laughs> The concept that means you're good at what you do. <laughs> than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent, Satan, said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God said, you shall not eat from it, nor touch it, otherwise you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, you know be stupid, eh? It's a fruit. Don't be, look, don't be 
You wouldn't die, girl. You wouldn't die. He lied to you. He lied to you, girl. You wouldn't die. That is Trini. Right? Yeah. But look, you really need to. You certainly will not die. For God knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. That is, you will have greater awareness. And you see how we make it attractive? And you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. God is good, and everything he created is good. But the one thing in the garden which was not good to eat was the tree of what? Of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan's seemingly innocent question was intended to undermine Eve's confidence in the goodness of God. But she was not aware of it. By the time Satan has finished, Eve has come to view God as the one who is less than good and the forbidden fruit as that which is good. So what he did, he took take her attention off of God who is good and put it on the fruit and make the fruit look good in her eyes, right? Once Eve doubted the goodness of God, it was a great deal easier for her to disobey him. Beware of distractions. Amen. It will be easier for you to walk in disobedience. Amen? So it was easier for her to disobey him. If God was not good and was not acting for her good, then why should she obey him? Indeed, why should she not act independently of God in seeking her own good, which is what? The fruit, because that's what she wanted, right? So what Satan did? Satan first changed Eve's percep perception of God, and then he was able to persuade her to disobey God by eating the forbidden fruit. The goodness of God is a perspective from which we can and should view all of God's commands, including what he said don't do. Amen? It is apparent from what happened as a result of the eating of the forbidden fruit that God forbade that fruit for man's good. Now when we look back, what do you think? If I was that, she too tap. Look at what she's making happen now. Think about it. This is the natural man now. Which is too tap. Look at what she may come upon uh, upon us now. But nothing catches God on our ways, eh? Nothing catches God on our ways. So we can see it was apparently it was for their own good. God said, Don't eat. Don't eat now. Nah. Don't eat now. Nah. He said, Don't do something, don't do it now. Nah. When we walk in disobedience, we walk further away from God's will for us. Amen? We walk further away. That was not part of my message. I don't know why I felt led to say that. But when we walk in disobedience, we walk further away from God's will for us. Amen. When God told her, don't eat, that should have been enough for her. What a good God forbids must be evil. Because he's a good God. And what a good God commands, we must be commands as good it is good what he said we must do we must do we must know the truth found in the word of God to avoid Satan when he tempts us to change our perspective of God he often does this by causing us to doubt God and his word so when situations happen I don't know now nah. I don't know how I will come out of this and you don't know that little statement is that you're, you're doubting God's ability to bring you out. And sometimes we say, that's just empty words. We have, as um, evangelists would have said on Sunday, we have to give account for every idle word, everything we say. So you're saying, I don't know how I'm coming out of this. That's your way of doubting. And that's how Satan is subtle. Took a little thing here, a little thing here, a little thing here. Until eventually you realize you're walking in full-blown disobedience. There is nothing God purposes for his children that is not good. God gives to his children only that which is good. And he withholds nothing good from us. 
God is good and he is at work in our lives for good. I want to remind you of that tonight. God is good and he's at work in our lives for good. Nothing which God creates, nothing which God accomplishes is not good. God allows nothing to happen to the believer which is not good. No matter what you may go through, it not be favorable. But it is working out for your good. Amen? Amen? We all know Romans 8.28, which says, and we know that God causes all things to work for our good, right? We know that scripture. We may be convinced of God's goodness and yet doubt that everything which happens to us is good. We carefully avoid blaming God, eh? Why? Because we know he's good. So we blame Satan for our trials and tribulations. Eh? Or we can always blame people. Is she? I know she didn't like me a long time, and I know that sister Linda didn't like me, you know. You see what happened to me here? It happens. So we, we, we wouldn't blame God because we know who he's, who he's good. But we, hit, we blame Satan for everything that happens. And as, as Apostle says, sometimes he chop you and say, me alone, huh? I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> Or we blame people. May I remind you, Paul's stone in the flesh was brought about by what? Huh? It was brought about by what? A messenger of Satan in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, right? Brought about by Satan. And yet God permitted this so his strength might be manifested through Paul's weakness. Amen? And you'll get it from verses 7 to 10. You can read it when you go home. And the evil Joseph's brother intended against him. God intended it for what? For good. Genesis 50, 20. Whatever comes into the life of the Christian is a part of God's purpose to bring about our good and his glory. So when going through the situation... Joseph went through a situation, he was sold... But God intended it for his for good. It was for good. Amen? God is good all the time. There's never a day when he say, I ain't feel to be good, nah. He's good all the time. Amen? It doesn't matter what happens to you. It could have been worse. It doesn't matter what happens. It could have been worse. I was reading a, a testimony, and the guy said, this pastor always said, no matter what you tell him, he would say it could have been worse. I can't remember, <clears throat> I can't remember where, where it was from, but I remember reading, it could have been worse. And this man said, I'll go test him today, and here I'll catch him. So he went up to the pastor, and he said, he dreamed he died, and the pastor said, it could have been worse. And he said, but, but what do you mean? I'm telling you what happened at the dream I had, and he said it could have been worse. He said, so what do you mean by that? He said, it could have been worse. You didn't need to be here. It could have actually happened. So when he tell you it could have been worse, that's what he's telling you. It could have actually happened. And we can, we can adopt that no matter what we go through in life. Say, it could have been worse. God, I thank you. Let's start learning to thank God for what we call small. Lord, I thank you for waking up this morning. I thank you for, I have the ability to see. There are those who can't see. I thank you for I can walk. There are those who are wheelchair bound. There are those who are bedridden. I thank you for I have a job. I may be going through a little stress here, but I know you're working it out. I and get into that habit. I thank you for my car. It may not be the new SUV I want, but it takes me from point A to point B, and I can come to church. If I need to go in the grocery, I can just jump in, and Susie is so faithful, she takes me there. When I need to go to work, Susie said, I said, come on, baby. And she starts and we go. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. 
And yes, he wants we live a life of gratitude. We realize that the things we worry about, we don't need to worry about it. When we live a life of gratitude. So I say again, God is good. Amen? Have you ever thought of God as generous towards you? You ever thought of God like that? Hmm? Can you believe that when he looks at you with all your baggage, all your junk, all your hang-ups, he says, oh, my daughter, I want to be generous to you. I love you so much. i just going to bless you. Eh? I can't wait to pour out that which will make you happy. <laughs> Not because you deserve it, you know, but uh, because there's something about who I am. That's who I am. And I love you so much. I love you so much that I just want to be extravagant with you today. I just want to pour out on you. The Bible says, those are actually God's thoughts about you, about me. God is for you. His thoughts are good for you and me. He has your back. He's there plotting to do you good, not to do you evil. You are the object of his affection. And because of his divine nature, all that he expresses come from an expansive, overwhelming, God-sized generosity towards you, towards me. That's the God we serve. Sometimes we need to stop and remind ourselves of who he is. God, you are good. You are all loving, all faithful. You will never see me fall and leave me there. Remind yourself, God, I know no matter what I go through, you are there. In my darkest hour, when there was no one, you was there. I had nobody to turn left or right to call, but I could have called out to you. Amen. And without calling, they could not help me because what I was going through, no man could have helped me. It had to be you. The torment I went through mentally, it had to be you to pull me out. That pit that I was in, it had to be because of your saving grace. I could have come out. No matter who could have talked and prayed, they could have prayed and talked, prayed and talked. It had to be you. So, Daddy, I thank you. I love you. And on Sunday, I said, there sometimes you feel that love so much, you don't know what to do with yourself. You go before God and you just cry, not because of any painful, but just the amount of love. Sometimes you feel like you can't contain it. You ever experience that? Lord, oh, it's like it overflowing. And when you open your mouth, it's just tears. And you're bawling, Lord, I can't believe you love me so much. I can't believe you love me so much that you sent your son to die for me. The Bible said no greater love had a man than this than to lay down his life for his friends. He laid, who is the friend? You and I, he laid down his life for us. When he died on the cross, he died for all humanity. The difference is that we accepted the, the good work he did for us. We accepted that gift. Daddy, how you love me so. I know I don't deserve it. I know I do real chupidness. But look at her. Look at this little girl now. Look at this little country girl now. Look at what you're doing. Sometimes you go before God and talk. I do it a lot. I don't care who see me talking and I can't say she chipping off. Let her say she chipping off. I know why talking. I say, look at what you do with me now, boy. I, when I look back, I say, look at where you take me from. Look at what you're doing with me. I could have never even imagined I would have been where I am today. You know why? Because I was the furthest thing from my mind. Look at where I am now. When I was going through a tough time, I thought that was the end. I, I said, Lord, look at what you do. You brought me out. Now there's a joy that overflows. I can sing and dance. I can worship you freely. I don't care who watch, who they. Father, I am here. I, I am yours. Use me for your honor and for your glory. And once you see we adapt that way, I'm telling you, things in life, it would look like small fries. Things what we see as challenging, you go just step over it so. Because you understand who you are. You understand the authority that was given to you. And you are walking in it. Amen? God is good. 
The Bible says God's thoughts are good towards you, right? I want to tell you a dream I had last night. And in the dream, I dreamt Sister Verna and my daughter, my big daughter, she's um, like she was sick in the dream. And I was watching like by her eyes on the dark, by her, in the dream, right? And Sister Verna hugging her like this and whatever. And I just stopped just when Jima said, no, 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 no. No, no, not, not this one. And I went to her and I lay my hands and I said, get your filthy hands off of my chair. And I started praying with her. And while praying with her, I felt led. She had in the dream, the hair was up in one and some plaits. And I opened up the plaits and I pull out. And when I pull out, I do this on her scalp. Separate the hair and I did this on her scalp. And I had this, this something like a small white womb was on the scalp. So I said, look at here. Look at here. I said, not this one. You know, I'm telling you this, Anna. This morning, early, because she's an early, um, she'll wake up very early. Half past four, she'll learn be up. Her father organizing for work, because he leaves by five latest. And he come, he said, jail is not up. Which I don't like her. So I said, um, he said, she's not going to school, I said, as far as I know. He said, but how she not up? So like he went and talked to her and he come and he tell me, she said she's not feeling well. Um, she, her body hurting her and whatever. So I said, her body hurting her? So you know, I jump up. I say, don't worry about that. That done deal with her already. He come. He, he watched me. I said, that done deal with her already. You don't worry about that. She come, she get up, she come outside. Next thing she telling me, she dreamed she was vomiting. So while I dreaming, I praying for you and sending wherever I come back, she dream. I couldn't do nothing. Watch me now. It's when I reach and work it hit me. I say, but daddy, what is this? No, for it. Because I am dreaming. I'm praying for you and whatever come out. I say, look at it. Just so I rested on. I say, look at here. And this child dreaming. She vomiting. Deliverance taking place. And I just want to say, I say, Lord, you know what? You're, you're too good. You're too good. And that's why I say sometimes you're in awe because... It's so strange. It, I was shocked because she, you telling me you dreaming, you vomiting. Why, and I was dreaming. I praying, praying for you. No, tell me. Tell me why I wouldn't serve my Lord. And that's why I say when they come gang up, don't worry. I have backup. And I stood up. I said, let me, let me say something. I'll give you ample warning. I say, you see, this household is don't touch. Amen. You see, this household is don't touch. Amen. Not one of my children. I start to declare over their lives. Let me tell you, that, that, what me and he does come so About a few nights, a few mornings ago, I went and I knelt by their bed and prayed for all of them. And I started to declare things in their life. So you want to come and show your, show your face in the wrong place. I said, I'm sending you back packing. You have no business here. You have no authority here because I ain't give you none. And I, I, I prayed over these children's lives. So when you see, I, that's why I say sometimes God fights battle for us. We don't even know. Sometimes he make you aware of certain things. But there are times that he's, he's fighting on your behalf and you're not aware of it. I, was, I sat at my desk today on work and I said, Lord... Lord, because it wasn't like a normal dream. I don't, I don't dream her. I, I, I was shocked. I said, but Lord, look at this. So I dream and I pray and rebuking and sending back whatever. And this child dream she vomiting. I said, wherever evil you try to plant, it will not manifest. And I'm sending everything back to sender. I'm sending your packing. You have no business with this family. God is a good God. And I stand, I just wanted to give that testimony because God is good. Yesterday morning, I got this message, the goodness of God. I had that dream last night into this morning. 
I don't believe in things happening by chance. I don't believe that. God, <laughs> God knows what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. I am lost without him. He knows what he's doing. He knows what is best for me. He knows what is best for you. God is good. God is good. Amen? Amen. God is good. I was telling a co about it, and she said, my paws raised when you're telling me about it. Because I encourage her, she's going through little struggles in the office, and I, am, I always encourage her. And I also look back, hey, second testimony here. I don't know why God leading me to tell you all this. Don't play with God. And when God says he's fighting for you, it's a thorough fight. You can never fight that battle. About two years ago, I remember standing right here and te te telling you all about the struggles I was going through in the office. Right? You can remember Sister Linda. Who don't want to promote because they don't like you, because of your belief. Who have nothing to do with the work. It's all about if they like you. Because I don't go party and lime and, and when all they keep in all the little backyard lime, I don't go. But that's not me. When I made a commitment to walk this walk, I dropped off all those things. Amen? Yeah. You know...
That's what all we have to do as Christians. You pray and you leave it in God's hands. He fights our battles for us. Some, some of them we know, some we don't know, but he fights. So I want to give God thanks tonight. I want to thank him for when they thought that they would have shipped me. Oh, these people tried for me to lose my work. That's to tell you how it was. They tried for me to lose my work. Not because I couldn't work. But God, God is a good God. Amen? Let me give you three specific channels God uses to broadcast his goodness to us. The first one, natural blessing. This is the lowest level at which he expresses his goodness and the one we tend to overlook or take for granted. But David saw it clearly. He was moved by God to write Psalm 145, a hymn of praise that celebrates God's goodness expressed in the created order. In verses 3 to 4, he says, Great is the Lord and great is to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Verses 7 to 9 describes what the older generation will say to the younger. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great what? Of thy great what? Goodness. Goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Verse 9. The Lord is good to who? Me alone? To you alone? To all. The Lord is good to everyone. Who is included in that word all? Me? You? Eh? All. He's good to all all. In case you miss that, he repeats the idea in the next phrase. His compassion or his tender mercies are over all his works. His tender mercies are what? Over all his. That means there's nowhere in the universe you can go where God won't be good to you. Amen? Amen? No matter where you go, God is still God, and he is still good. In verses 15 to 17, it says, The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Holy in all his works. He said, all eyes look to you. Every relationship, every job, every tree, every taste of food that pleases us, every bird we hear sing, every friend, every flower, they feel a reminder of his compassion for us. 
Look in every corner of this world and every part of your day and you will find the overflow of his generosity if you will only begin to stop and look. Pause every day and look and you will see his goodness. Amen? Number two, so we're talking about three specific channels God used to broadcast his goodness to us, right? The first was natural blessing. The second is kind interventions. Psalm 107 is totally devoted to this theme and opens with joy. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endured forever. Next verse. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of who? The enemy. Who he has redeemed from what? The hand of the enemy, the hand of the foe. Then the psalmist describes four different scenarios where God graciously steps in to reveal his goodness. Let's read it. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty. So they were wandering. And how they were doing it? Hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. God rescues those who pounded by calamity when the storms threaten to sink us and we're at our wit's end. We can call to him and see him command the storms to be still because he is good. God comes to the rescue of people who are frantically searching for something or someone that will satisfy their soul. When they cry out to the Lord, he will deliver them and their soul will find its true home. Amen? God intervenes on behalf of his goodness in the lives of foolish people who had given themselves to sin and find its death-bringing results touching their relationships and lives. When they cry to the Lord, he heals them. If we continue to read um, the rest of Psalm 107. That would be, you'll go, man, read it, right? God intervenes in the lives of those who have rebelled against the word of God and suffer for it. When they repent, he delivers them from their distress, breaks the chains of sin that bind them, and turns the night to day. That's the kind of God we serve. He's been there for you more than you'll ever know. No matter what situation you are facing this evening, God is the best person to take it to. Amen? Amen? There is no surer source of deliverance or blessing than him because he is good all the time. Colossians 1 reminds us that Jesus is the image of the invisible God in verse 15 and that God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. That's verse 19. Write it down so you'll read it when you go home, right? Jesus is God's goodness in the flesh. Jesus is God's goodness in the flesh. He demonstrated God's desire to pour out blessing and help and deliver us on us in three ways. He took the judgment that our sins deserved upon himself. Romans 5, it says what? God proves his own love for us that while we, was, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You all know that, right? He includes a thousand other things in the gift of himself. Romans 8, 32 says, He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? In other words, God has already shown his goodness towards you in the biggest way possible. All the other little details to help you live a godly life, through thick and thin, are included in that gift. Amen? And the third thing is that Jesus unlocks God's goodness towards us in new ways. 2 Corinthians 1.20 tells us that every one of God's promises is yes in Christ. That means all the good and perfect gifts of God come to us through our relationship with Jesus. Amen? Romans 2.4 says, Or do you despise the riches of God, 
God's kind, of his kindness, restraint, and patience, not recognizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. Paul is saying, do you think that all these blessings that visit your days come because you are just an incredibly nice person who made God specialist? Eh? You think that is why all of this you are benefiting from it? No, his goodness was meant to lead you to him. Amen? His goodness was meant to lead you to him. Before you would have accepted Christ, I can say for myself, I would have experienced his goodness. So his goodness is not dependent on if you are a good person or if you are living the best life or perfect life. His goodness is on all. Amen? His goodness was meant to lead you to him. Going through your life receiving what he has given without trusting in Christ is like saying, God, I had all this coming in. I deserve all that in. Bring some more. Bring some more. Because you believe that you deserve all that he's, he, he's given you. Truth is, we don't deserve it. Truth is, we don't deserve it. Keep it coming. We want the gifts, but not the giver. We want the gifts, but not the giver. I want, to, want you to stop, look around you, and see the hand of the Lord in your life and learn to thank him. He's there for you. Psalm 31, 19 to 20 says, How great is your goodness that you have stored up for those who fear you and accomplished in the sight of everyone for those who take refuge in you. You hide them in the protection of your presence. You conceal them in a shelter from the schemes of men, from quarrelsome tongues. This year of dominion, know that God has great goodness stored up for you. Amen? He's up to more than you know and has hidden help that only comes when you give it up to him. No matter what you face this year, give it up to him. No matter what you face, give it up to him. Psalm 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is a son. He illuminates the path I should take. And shield, he protects me. The Lord gives grace and glory. That's, that's exaltation for those who follow him. He does not withhold the good from those who live with integrity. You never miss out if you step out with God. Never. It can never happen. You never miss out if you step out with God. Amen? Stand with me as we pray. So God is good. And all the time, God is good. God is good. You know, as a child growing up, they teach you this prayer. God is great. God is good. Now let's thank him for our food. Amen. Before you eat, right? Eh? You know that, right? And you're just repeating it, but you don't know what you're saying. Because the truth is, he is good. But you know, as a child, you don't know. My children say it in school. God is great. God is good. Now we thank him for our food. They say it before they eat. But the truth is, he is good. He is good. Amen? They, they may not know what they are saying then. They may not know, but God bless their little hearts. Because watch me, these children, and they say, God is great. God is good. You know why it's taught to them? That's why it's important to teach them the right thing. Teach them the right thing. How easy life will be for them. And I'm not saying easy in terms of they wouldn't go through situation. Yes, they'll go through. But their mind would have already been focused on God. Everything. Because you see, when you teach them from small, the Bible said, what, train up a child in the way he should go, right? So when he get older, he wouldn't depart. So if we do it from now, I can imagine the mighty men and women we'll see. Amen? The mighty men and women of God. Amen? Let us pray. My Father, help me to ever remember the many blessings I have received from you. Help me never to forget what you have done for me. 
Father, help me never to forget what you have done for me. Help me to always remember the many blessings. Father, give me a grateful heart that when I wake up in the morning, I always remember to give you thanks. Let me remember to give you thanks daily, O oh God. Help me to stop and look and see all your goodness upon my life daily. Father, help me to give you praise and thanks daily for what you have done for me. Help me to not look at it as small but help me to see how big it is because there are those who didn't wake up. There are those who can't speak. There are those who can't walk and you have given me the ability. Help me to be forever grateful, O oh God. Help me to be forever grateful. Help me to ever remember the many blessings I have received from you. In Jesus' name. O oh Lord, help me to taste your truth. And to see how you are working in my life. Help me to taste your truth and to see how you are working in my life. Father, open my eyes to see how you are working in my life, oh God. Father, open my eyes so that I can see your goodness. Help me, oh God, to see what you are doing in my life. Help me to taste your truth, oh God. Help me to see what you are doing in my life, in the lives of the members of this ministry, in the life of the leaders of this ministry. Help us to see, oh God, what you are doing in our lives, what you are doing in our families oh god help us to see oh god in the mighty name of jesus lord today we confess you are good we confess you are good we confess you are good in every area of my life you are good you are a good god always good no matter what i face you are good you are good you are a good god open your mouth oh god father we confess you are good you are good in my life you are good in my family life you are good in the life of the members of this ministry you are good in the life of the members of dominion city father you are good you are good we confess today you are good you are good you are good god good God. You are a good, good God. We confess you are good. We confess you are good in Jesus' name. You are a good God, always good, always good. You desire good things for me and never bad. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that Psalms 27 verses 13 to 14, I decree and declare that Psalms over our lives. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I decree over our lives that we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am confident in this in Jesus' name. I am confident in this. I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. According to Psalm 27 verses 13 to 14, I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am confident in this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. God is good. Look to your neighbor and say, we end enough as we started. Look to your neighbor and say, God is good. Amen.